Hey guys and welcome back to the course. It is now time for the enemies to deal damage to our players. In this game, players will share a single health stat. So I'll start off by making a UI text element that I'll rename to health. Once it has been created, I'll select the canvas skin object and I'll change the UI skill mode to scale with screen size. I'll then set the reference resolution to 1600 by 900. Now I'll select my text element and I'll click on this button here. Now with the shift and alt keys pressed down, I'll click on the top left anchor preset, which will set the position as well as the pivot to the top left corner. This way, no matter on what device we'll play this game, our health text element will always be correctly placed. With that done, we can just style the text element as we like. So I'll just bump up the font size quite a bit and I'll also change the color to white. Let's give our health text a starting value of 10. Next off, we'll create an empty game object called health. We'll also create a new c -sharp script called health. Once it has been created, we can drag and drop it onto our newly created health objects. In here, we'll make a obvious public int health variable that we can set to 10 for example. We'll also want a public void take damage function, and when this is called, we'll simply reduce our health variable by 1. Once we take some damage, we need to update the health text UI. To do so, I'll add at the top of my script the unityengine.ui namespace. With that done, we can go ahead and make a public text variable called health display. Then, right after the line of code where we decrement the health variable by 1, I'll set our health display.text to be equal to the health variable. Don't forget to convert the integer into a string by adding dots to string. Alright, so now let's call this take damage function from within our player controller scripts. So in here, I'll start off by creating a health variable called health script. Then inside of the start function, we'll set the health script variable to be equal to find object of type health. So this line will search our scene for an object that has the health script attached to it, and then it will store that component inside of our health script variable. So we want to call our take damage function when a player collides with an enemy. So let's make a on trigger enter to the function. For those who don't know, this function is automatically called by Unity each time our player character will collide with another object. So in here, we need to check if what we collided with was an enemy. To do so, I'll check if the object that we collided with, which is stored in this collision variable, has a tag attached to it named enemy. If it does, then we can go ahead and call our health script take damage function that we just made a few moments ago. Okay, so to quickly recap, we've got a health script with a public take damage function. When it gets called, we'll decrement by one our health variable, and we'll also update our health UI to show the correct number. Then inside of the player control script, we've got this on trigger enter to the function that gets called automatically by Unity whenever a player collides with another object. Then inside of this, we're checking if what we collided with has an enemy tag on it. And if it does, then we're calling our take damage function. Like usual, this entire health system would work perfectly fine for a single player game. However, for a multiplayer game, there are a few problems. First of all, if we left things like this, each time a player collides with an enemy, we would take two damage in total, one for each instance of that player. So to fix this, we need to wrap this code inside of a if view.isMine, which checks if we are the local player, in other words, the player that is controlling this character. Okay, so that is fixed. But at the moment, this is what happens. One player collides with an enemy, he calls the take damage function, which removes one from the health variable and updates the text. But all this only happens for one player, the one that took the damage. But we need to synchronize all this so that the other player also sees that the team took damage. So at the moment, the only thing that we know how to synchronize over the network are spawning objects thanks to the photon network .instantiate function, the photon view component and putting the object in the resources folder, synchronizing movement with the photon transform view component, and finally synchronizing animations with the photon animator view component. But the question is, how do we synchronize all the rest? 
For example, in our case right now, how do we synchronize our health variable and the health display UI when they get changed? Well, that's when RPC functions come in super useful. These special functions synchronize everything that's inside of them. To use these functions, we need once again a photon view component on the objects. So I'll quickly go back to Unity and I'll add a photon view component to our health objects. With that done, we can now go back to our scripts. I'll first of all import the photon.pun namespace. Now I'll be able to make a photon view variable that I'll call view. Then instead of the start function, we'll set view to be equal to the photon view component that is attached to our health object. So I'll now create a new void function called take damage RPC. And then I will just steal all the code from our take damage function and place it instead inside of the take damage RPC function. Now to turn this function into a RPC, we just need to add on top of it inside of square brackets pun RPC. This just lets Unity know that we want to synchronize all the code that is inside of this function. Now from within our public void take damage function, we need to call our take damage RPC function. This is where our photon view is required. So I'll say view.rpc, and then inside of the quotation marks, I'll just type in the name of the RPC function that we want to call. So I'll say take damage RPC. Then for the second parameter, we will say RPC target all, which just means that we want to synchronize the RPC to all players. And that's it. So just make sure that both your health and player control scripts are nicely saved and we can now head over back to Unity. Now to make our collision detection work between our players and our enemies, we need to add to both of them a box collider 2D component that we will set to trigger. These are just invisible walls that let Unity know the boundaries of our characters. Then we just need to add a rigid body 2D component to at least one of them. So I'll select my enemy and I'll add to him a rigid body 2D component set to kinematic. This just ensures that there will be no gravity applied to him. Then the last thing that we need to do is to add the enemy tag. So I'll come up here and I'll click on the add tag button. And I'll just go ahead and create the enemy tag. Once it's been created, just add that tag to our enemy. Okay, let's test this all out. So I will build a version of the game by pressing Ctrl B or Command B if you're on the Mac. Okay, so let's get hit by one of our enemies and yes, perfect. Our health is getting reduced on both versions of our game. Our health system is working just as we expected. Great job guys. You just learned about one of the most important things when creating multiplayer games, which are RPC functions. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!